Unit 7, Video Lecture 1, Representing Chemical Reactions. When we think about chemical reactions, let's talk about a common substance that we use every day. Let's think about gasoline. Well, first off, gasoline is a hydrocarbon, meaning that it's made of hydrogen and carbon. Gasoline starts off as a liquid that we put into our car, and eventually we're going to take that and turn it into exhaust, which is carbon dioxide and water and heat. So we take gasoline. We take octane in gasoline, and we burn it with oxygen. Remember, oxygen's that diatomic molecule that's, that's required for life. And we turn it into carbon dioxide and water. So a chemical reaction is the process of taking something and creating something new. If you remember back from Chapter 6, we talked about evidence of chemical reactions. So what are we going to use to help us suggest that, a, that atoms of a substance rearrange to form new substances? Well, one of the first things that we can do is, and remember, this is naturally occurring if the temperature changes. So if we have a change in temperature, if we have a color change, if we have the production of an odor, so if it starts to smell. If we have the production of a gas, the formation of a precipitate, or a solid formation. And then finally, if we have the production of light. Representing chemical reactions. Well, chemical reactions, we're going to have stuff that is before and after. So we're going to have reactants and products. And it's going to be separated by an arrow. This arrow means yields, creates, conserves, means any one of those things. But it's used to separate our reactants from our products. Our reactants are substances that we have before. They're always on the left side of the arrow. And we have our products, which is what's after and they're found on the right side of the arrow. Let's look at some symbols that we can use in chemical reactions. If we have more than one reactant or more than one product, we're going to use a plus sign to separate them. Remember, our arrow means creates, forms, yields, If we put an S in parentheses, okay, this is, these are our next are going to be small, and they're going to determine our states of matter. So an S in parentheses is going to be going to tell us if we're working with a solid. We can put an L in parentheses to identify a liquid. A G in parentheses is going to represent a gas. 
and then the bottom one identifies a water solution or something that's dissolved in water, we're going to use AQ. Now for our purposes, the majority of the time we're not going to put these symbols. However, don't get thrown off if you see them. So, to represent chemical reactions, we're going to use chemical equations. And there's multiple types of chemical equations. The first is a word equation. The word equation just tells us what's the reactants and what's the products. So, a type of word equation would be where we write out something like iron plus chlorine yields iron 3 chloride. Fairly simple, uses its names and just tells us what's there before and what's there after. So take a second and identify the reactants in this equation. Iron and chlorine are the reactants, and iron 3 chloride is what's made, it's the product. Another type of word equation would say something like hydrochloric acid and solid sodium bicarbonate are mixed together, forming aqueous solutions of sodium chloride water and carbon dioxide gas. So here we can still identify the reactants and products. Hydrochloric acid and solid sodium bicarbonate. They're mixed together. So that happens at the beginning. We see the keyword forming and then the sodium chloride, water, and carbon dioxide are our products. Although word equations help describe the chemical reactions, they lack important information. So our next type of equation is a skeleton equations. Just like our skeletons provide the backbone for our bodies, skeleton equations are going to use chemical formulas rather than words to identify the reactants. They're going to be our basic type, our support structure, if you will, for a chemical reaction. So we can take our word equation, iron plus chlorine yields iron 3 chloride, and to write a skeleton equation. To do this, we write the formula of iron, which is Fe plus chlorine, and remember chlorine is one of our diatomic molecules, so it's Cl2 yields iron 3 chloride. So to do this, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to look at our, the back of our periodic table, find iron 3, find that it's iron with a positive 3 charge, chloride is Cl with a negative charge, and we crisscross our signs, or we crisscross our charges, drop the signs, and reduce. So there's our skeleton equation for iron plus chlorine yields iron 3 chloride. Hydrochloric acid and solid sodium bicarbonate are mixed together forming aqueous solutions of sodium chloride, water, and carbon dioxide. Well, hydrochloric acid is HCl, and that's something that would normally be given to you because we're not expecting you to know how to name acids quite yet, plus sodium bicarbonate. On the back of our periodic table, we see that sodium is Na plus 1, and bicarbonate is listed on the back of your periodic table as hydrogen carbonate. You see bicarbonate in parentheses, underneath your periodic table. Here's bicarbonate, 
and we see the formula is HCO3 with a negative charge. So Na plus 1, HCO3, remember we can't change anything about HCO3 with a negative 1 charge. So we crisscross our signs and we have NaHCO3. Forming, so we use our arrow, aqueous solutions of sodium chloride. Sodium is Na. Chloride is Cl with a negative 1. So it's NaCl. Water is H2O. And carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, We see the prefixes, which reminds us that this is a covalent compound. So since it's a covalent compound, the prefix tells us how many elements of each atom is there. No prefix with carbon means that there's only one carbon. The second element is oxide, which is oxygen. The prefix 2 on oxide tells us that there's two oxygens. So hydrochloric acid plus sodium bicarbonate yields sodium chloride plus water plus carbon dioxide. Pause the video and work through these practice skeleton equations. Sodium hydroxide reacts with sulfuric acid to produce sodium sulfate and water. Well, sodium hydroxide, sodium is a positive 1. Hydroxide is OH with a negative 1. So we crisscross our charges and see that our compound is NaOH. Reacts with, so it means we have a second reactant, sulfuric acid. H2SO4 to produce sodium sulfate. So sodium is a positive 1. Sulfate is SO4. Let's look up the charge real quick. We look on the back of our periodic we look on the back of our periodic table on our ion sheet. Come down to sulfate. And sulfate is SO4, negative 2. So we can't mess with the SO4, and we'll have our negative 2 charge. So we crisscross. We have one of the SO4s and two sodiums. So sodium sulfate is Na2SO4. And our second product and water, H2O. Silver nitrate reacts with copper metal to produce silver metal and copper 2 nitrate. Well, silver is Ag, and when we look on the back of our periodic table, scroll down, we find silver is Ag with a positive 1 charge, and nitrate is NO3 with a negative 1 charge. So Ag with a positive 1, nitrate is NO3 with a negative 1 charge. So we crisscross and silver nitrate's formula is Ag NO3. This reacts with copper metal. So this is just an element. Copper is not one of our diatomic atoms, so it's just Cu. This produces silver metal, so Ag, and copper 2 nitrate. Well, nitrate is still NO3 with a negative 1 charge, and copper 2 is copper with a positive 2 charge. So we take our 2 and move it to nitrate. 
So we have NO3, 2. We take the negative 1 charge and move it to copper. So we have AgNO3 plus Cu yields Ag plus CuNO3, 2.